Oh, man. I had the clutch off the whole time. Once again, I'm doing it wrong. Big Sugar Gravel just wrapped up here in Bentonville, Arkansas. It was a hoot. Raced the new Canyon Grail CFR. After having all the flat tires last year and climbing down in the river, had much better luck this year. Had, you know, ended up with not quite as much air in the rear as I would have liked, but did not have to stop. Finished up second overall in the amateur race, won 40 plus. This year, the Lifetime Grand Prix folks had separate starts, which made for a much more civilized start for the rest of us. In this video, I wanna tell you about the bike and all the various components, like the trap door, the pop on, pop off bag that I use quite a bit, DRX Di2. Y'all know I love this. The wheel almost came off today, quite literally, also metaphorically. It's going up a hill and all of a sudden, you know, 250, 300 watts became like 600. I was like, what is going on? Looked down and the axle had worked its way out. So I had to stop, pull the tool out of here, tighten that down, chase back on. Also managed to miss, I don't know about most of the turns, but a number of turns, four, five, six turns today. <laughs> got a lot of footage here, which I'll be showing through this video on a camera that got ran over by a van on the Austin F1 track earlier this week. Took a lick and kept on ticking, so I'm impressed with this DJI Action Cam 4. Bike otherwise is stock. I also borrowed my friend Garen Watkins' computer. I'm staying at his place here. Cheeky guy that I am, I borrowed his computer. Cobbled together a mount for this, courtesy of the good folks at Mellow Johnny's. Tell you the stories of how I ended up on this bike was not planning to bring this bike was planning on bringing the argonaut with fatter 45 tires because this tire eats this tire <laughs> i am tired this race eats tires for breakfast nearly ate mine but we're not having that okay real quick before i forget so this bag is magnetic pops off pops on and i put i don't know six gels and various things in here. Also had the CO2 in here. Realized that the internal storage, I was able to pop the door off with the bag on, but was not able to get the door back on. So just had to tuck that guy in my back pocket. This thing worked pretty well. Allowed me to, you know, the, there's flat fixing stuff in here. There's also a pump that was attached to this. The multi-tool was in here. Honestly kind of wished that Come on now. Honestly, I kind of wish that the wheels, you know, just had levers on them instead of requiring a tool because that would not had to. Anyhow, I wish the wheels had the lever on there instead of having to dig a tool out. In addition to having the flat fixings down in there and the multi-tool and the pump, you've also got your DI2 battery in here. Obviously not for SRAM bikes, but for Shimano DI2 bikes which means a few things. One is you don't have to have it in the post, which I appreciate for travel. You can just pop off the seat post without you know, worrying about the cable going down or you don't have to worry about the battery sliding out from the seat post into the seat tube. That's happened to me more than a couple times on other bikes. So I kind of appreciate this location for that. Stay. Oh, lastly, a benefit of internal storage is I didn't have to run a saddle bag and I've had uh, another mount for the DJI. And I probably should have just had two cameras instead of moving it back and forth. That would have been smarter. The bars, integrated bar stem. Shape was generally comfortable. It's you know, definitely on the wider side. It got a back sweep, which falls off a little bit and then flared out as is the trend these days. You know, spent the downhills like that. Bike got slacker. It's now 71 and a half, which on pavement and very smooth dirt roads, you know, doesn't feel quite as lively and darty as the old one. But today when I was coming around corners with the foot out and squealing and grabbing brake, I wasn't wishing for a steeper bike. You know, in fact, the bike I was planning to bring was the Argonaut GR3, a very slack bike with, you know, much larger tire clearance. Gearing, I was happy to have a double. I was using all the gears. You know, I was looking for more 
on some of the steep climbs. That was you know, where I was having the, the hardest time for sure. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm gonna get some food, gonna go over to the podium. And then we'll meet back here and we'll talk Canyon Grail CFR and big sugar gravel. All right, we're back. It's Sunday morning here in Bentonville. I want to talk about three things. The race for context, things I screwed up, and thereby things you can and should do better, and what I liked and didn't like about this setup. Big Sugar Gravel was the seventh and final event in the Lifetime Grand Prix. Seven races, gravel, mountain bike, with a quarter million dollar prize purse for the overall. The awards ceremony was last night with DJs Taylor Finney and Alexis Scarta mixing some tunes and the top 10 women and men receiving their big checks. Big Sugar Gravel had two distances, 50 mile and 100 mile. I did the 100. There were three starts, the Grand Prix men, followed a few minutes later by the Grand Prix women, followed a few minutes later by the teaming masses, all the rest of us. The course was 104 miles, 25 miles of which were pavements. It was about half in Arkansas, half in Missouri, and it was chunky. Chunky gravel, beautiful area, especially this time of the year with the fall foliage, often providing a nice tree canopy for the trail. Visibility was limited. This is not your Kansas rolling plains, you know, Midwest gravel where you can see for miles and miles. You could only see a few hundred feet up the road, sometimes less, especially early on when the sun was low and there's a big group kicking up a ton of dust. Often people in front of you would point out obstacles, not so much with their hands, but with their helmets as they would hit a big hole or a big rock. I had my f one foot or the other out uh, quite a bit on some of the descents where it was you know loose, fast, sometimes off camber. As the race wore on and the front group got smaller we began to catch shrapnel coming off the back of the women's race. Women who had flatted or crashed or both. I talked to a number of the women during the event and afterwards and they all seemed to appreciate having a separate start. A few like Heather Jackson said she was concerned initially that maybe the racing wouldn't be quite as aggressive in a smaller bunch. You know, there's 35 women starting together plus a few other elite pros such as newly crowned gravel world champion Kasha Niwiadoma and a few others. The racing, however, proved to be plenty aggressive and the course also with its, you know, challenging terrain broke the race up. So there was no lack of hard competition uh, despite the women's field being relatively smaller. One thing I very much appreciate about gravel racing is we all get to race out there on the same course and you get to meet folks from all over, see old friends, meet some new ones, and Big Sugar was certainly no exception there. You know, talking with some of the women coming back and then just meeting uh, guys in our event. The front group in the non-GP race, the amateur race, the teaming masses race, the front group whittled down to about uh, eight or so riders. By the midway point, there were two neutral stops and a couple water oases. First stop, most of us blew through that. The second stop, we're doing the thing you do in gravel races, like, hey, you, you need to stop, you need to stop, because everyone wants to stop. Most oh, everyone wants to stop, but no one wants to get left behind, right? And no matter how much head shaking there is in agreement, this, things are gonna get, you know, pulled apart. Pretty much everyone in that front group either had a hydration pack or a third bottle uh, in the jersey. It was cool to start 55 degrees or so, but many of us opted to make a quick pit stop there in the second feed zone. Chris Hansen, however, kept motoring on immediately on the outside of the feed station. There's a steep climb and it took a few of us, including Heather Jackson, who was in our group at that point, a few minutes to bring Chris back into the fold. John Fry, a 20-something from Lincoln, Nebraska, took a flyer early on and was able to hold the rest of us off to take the win in the amateur race. Nice work, John. About 10 miles to go, I hit one of the many thousands of big sharp rocks that were out there and the rear tire started to go soft. I didn't want to stop and top it off or try and plug it because I didn't want to get dropped from the front group. Another gentleman in my group was suffering from a similar a you know, squishy tire situation. In the last three miles or so, there's two short but steep climbs. Chris uh, gave it some sauce going up one of those and whittled our group down from the eight or so to just himself, John, and me. And then also the last climb going up 
uh, into the finish. Chris was on the gas. He took off his USB vest to toss it aside and attacked. We were able to get back on his wheel and I was able to come around him there in the saddle, bouncing up and down on my tire uh, across the finish line. So it was super fun racing. And again, just enjoyed meeting people from all over, including Sean, who was former New Mexican from Santa Fe, was in third. Vamanos, Sean. Okay, now, things I screwed up. It's a long list. I've got to refer to my notes here. In three words, haste makes waste. When I was going to pack the bike for this trip, I was going to Austin first to test ride the BMC Tame Machine. You can check that video. Also, that's where I got my camera run over on the track. I left packing the bike to the last minute. I was planning to bring an Argonaut GR3 because it's got big fat tires, slack at front end. Discovered mm, the integrated cockpit would not dissemble enough to give me enough hose slack to put that bike in my primary Thule bike bag. So I pulled out another Cycon bag that allows you to keep the bars on. Bars fit, wheelbase did not. Even though it's got an adjustable wheelbase, the GR3 is longer than that. So I was like, uh, okay, um, plan C. See if the Grail would work. And even though this has an integrated bar stem, it does remove and there's the cables are not inside, I'm sorry, the brake hoses are not inside the bar stem, so there was just enough wiggle room to get that in the Thule. So that is why I have this bicycle. That led to another scramble of if I need to have a GoPro slash DJI mount on the bike. So I was going through my little box of small bolts trying to steal from Paul to pay Peter and got the parts, but didn't have the screws needed for that so i took the parts i did have to austin went to mel johnny's bike shop and went there hat and pieces in hand said could you gentlemen please help and help they did thank you very much appreciate that and was able to get this kind of cobbled together last minute went to austin flights from austin to bentonville were delayed of course because that's how travel goes got in pretty late and started building this bike up you know well after dark in my buddy Garen's Airbnb. My shakeout ride consisted of just tootling around the neighborhood in the dark, which leads me to more screw-ups. One was realizing the, what I thought was Oahu to go on this mount because I needed to turn the mount sideways to get the thing to fit, was actually a stages computer. <laughs> so that would not work without being sideways. Luckily, Garen had this sitting around, so I liberated it temporarily. Thanks, Garen. Another screw up was I put the front wheel axle on with just the feedback sports torque wrench that I had. I did not wrench it down hard enough. I used the torque wrenches because I had, that was the one tool I brought to put everything together. I should have pushed harder on that. Not a fault of the tool, obviously, but a fault of the tool who was operating said tool. That led to the wheel coming nearly off when the axle slid out, I don't know, halfway or so through the events. This is why we do shakeout rides, right? You wanna build the thing up with enough time to go out and put the bike through its paces and literally shake out things like, mm, the axle that's not tight enough. So again, haste making waste, I did not leave myself enough time to do so. So my advice based on all that is give yourself time, <laughs> do your prep, with enough time before you pack or the timing of the event so that when you discover problems, you can address the problems and you're not addressing these problems in the event. Okay, what else did I screw up? I know there's gotta be more. Oh, right, computer. So I had no idea what the settings were on Garen's Wahoo Bolt here. I just popped the course on, off we went. Uh, discovered that it was not set up to alert you to upcoming terms. It was just the, you know, breadcrumb Turn. I've been using my Garmin Edge 830 for a while, and that, yeah, will beep at, will show you turns are coming up and can be set to beep at you. This, luckily, will beep at you and flash LEDs when you miss the turn, which <laughs> I did a few times. You know, once on a screaming downhill, like super tucked downhill on pavement, flying, and I'm going along, and all of a sudden it's like, it's really quiet. Where is everybody? And look back in there 
way back up the hill, having realized sooner than I did that we missed the turn and they turned back around. And so there was, there was some of that. Again, that's not a fault of the computer. That's the fault of the owner not taking time to familiarize himself with the settings. And last piece, what I screwed up. <clears throat> the video I was shooting yesterday, I was trying to put this, I like the side mount cages and those are kind of key for this whole configuration. Yesterday, come on now. I was trying to operate a very simple mechanism, a latch pointed the wrong way. So <laughs> I was, my little tiny brain was stumped as to why this was not working. I saw the esteemed mechanic, Wayne Smith, AKA big tall Wayne at the party last night. I was like, Wayne I had this issue. And he's like, he saw always a very generous man instead of just laughing in my face. He's like, well, um, I don't mean you any offense, but are you sure you had the door the right way? And I was like, uh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not sure at all. So yeah, turns out all you have to do is not get outsmarted by a simple door that goes two ways. So yet another thing I screwed up, yet another thing you can file under the, the haste makes waste. And again, in retrospect, that's why I was able to get the thing off with this bag on. And if I'd thought about that for a hot second, I probably could have put it back on the same way it came off. Well, maybe not. Well. <laughs> okay, taking a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the situation. Could also chalk this up to part of the fun of testing a new bike and new gear at every event and getting in a situation where you're scrambling with limited oxygen to the brain, but all part of the fun. Section three, what I liked and did not like. The Slacker Geo for this course was actually welcome. You know, it's, it does feel a little sleepy when you're on pavement, but coming around fast off camber, loosey goosey descents with one leg out, I wasn't thinking, man, I wish I had a really steep head angle at this point. Bar shape, I like, and both the flat tops for dispersing pressure, a little bit of back sweep like that feels like a nice secure perch. I like the fact that it's a shallow drop and you know flared for a bit of extra stability. So we can and I will go down a rabbit hole later about being stuck with certain configurations. I'll do that in a separate video as I swap out bars. It comes with my favorite all-round tires, Schwalbe G1 RS. Love these things. They are great for a huge range of surfaces from pavement to most types of gravel and they were adequate for big sugar but the best tire for big sugar i think is is a wider one with some more knobs yes there's 25 miles of pavement but at least in the amateur race the pavement was kind of where we were going chill because no one wanted to be doing work with everybody sitting on you know tires you're always trying to optimize for all things you can't optimize for all things but here you know stability and grip and protection against the gnarly rocky rocks is probably of top importance. This bike is definitely stiffer than the old Grail, uh, in part because the VCLS post is out and this new post is in. The Physique Argo saddle takes some of the blow, some of the sting out of the rough stuff, but also just going, going hard helps. All in all, I really like this bike. I like the feel of it. I generally like the fit. I love the integrated storage and the bag. This worked super well. I love the tires for 99% of riding. I'm a little stumped as to why Canyon restricted tire clearance to 42. So you're effectively stuck with a 40. Again, most of the time, a 40 is awesome. Like if I had to pick one tire to ride for everything, it would be this tire. So in that sense, I'm tickled with this tire, but in the essence, of you know trying to show you the potential cons of this bike if you do want to put on a bigger tire for a particular event like big chunky gravel sugar can't do that here i love the fact that it comes with a power meter and this time i am sure that this bike comes with a power meter unlike the trek madone that i said comes with a power meter and i was totally wrong about that this configuration isn't available in the us so i don't know what the pricing is this is the cfr frame set but with 
Shimano GRX Di2. In the US, you can only get the CF bike, the SL8 with Di2. That's for just under five grand. I was able to find this bike on the UK site where it was like an additional 1,600 pounds or so. So you know, I figured this would be another 1,800 bucks if you were able to get that here. But as of now, this particular model with the DT Swiss GRC 1100 wheels and the CFR, the top end frame set is not available in the US. So that is my Canyon Grail report from Big Sugar Gravel down here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for coming up and saying hi here at the event. It's nice to meet some of y'all. I'll be doing another video on the bars. I'll be doing a video on that BMC team machine with the DJI playing a cameo role of getting run over by a truck. I will also be doing a video or two with the man Alex Howes on tires. He has tested a wide slew of tires at all the events he's done this year. So we're gonna swap notes on what we liked and what worked well and what got totally sideways on us. Alex also came across the line with a, a squishy rear, so you can watch out for that. And remember, haste makes waste. Give yourself a little extra time to make sure your bike is gonna hold together and that will help you enjoy the ride. Why don't you wanna go back on? dust in there or anything.